The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Everybody get up. Hello and welcome to the Girls of 28A. I am Trisha Santanera and in the little box next to me is Julia Snegowski in LA. Hello everybody. <laughs> Sorry if there's a delay, but okay, we're gonna go straight into it this week and we did not have host picks last week, so we are gonna go straight into that. First up is Julia's host pick for the week. Julia, can you please explain that to us? <laughs> um, that's my cat. <laughs> I scared it. <laughs> that's scaredy cat. <laughs> there is a good example of Julia's um, strange sense of humor for her host peak, as usual. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> Whatever, mine's, mine's always you... a funnier one. <laughs> okay, so my host peak for the week is actually not a video clip. It's actually just a photo and a bit of useless information. As we all know, it was Friday the 13th, last Friday. And so there are a few people out there who think that Friday the 13th is a bad, unlucky day. So if you think that the black cat crossing your path means that there is a bad omen or putting your shoes on the table, it's gonna invite bad spirits or knocking on wood, making sure that you know shit doesn't happen to you if you say something really terrible. There are a few facts and some case studies done on this. In 1993, they found that the higher risk of road accidents happen on Friday the 13th that mm. hospital admissions rise to 52% rise by 52% in a result of transport accidents. So there's some use, useless information for you and that women in particular are at higher risk of dying on the road on Friday the 13th compared to any usual Friday. But the conclusion to all of this people Okay, there's a bit of madness behind all of this Friday the 13th hula being a bad day, because it's just not. Because <laughs> I was born on Friday the 13th. Let's just get that clear. Oh, Trisha, what did I say about you? <laughs> so basically, um, case studies show that Friday the 13th may be dangerous for women especially, largely because of anxiety from superstition people. That's it. So all you women out there, get out of your cars and get in a taxi. <laughs> Let your husband drive because you know what? Crime rates do not rise. There's nothing that correlates against this. Actually, numerologists consider that 13 is a lucky number. It says that it is uh, the lucky number of upheaval. So there you go for all those superstitious people who thought that they had a bad day on Friday. It's actually just you being an idiot and being really worried. <laughs> Julia. <laughs> Julia has no words because she is maybe not superstitious. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I, I think maybe women just buy into it more, right? Yeah. Like today I woke up with a bunch of blasted text messages, Friday the 13th. Maybe it's because we believe it and we buy into it. So we get in those car wrecks. I don't know. Exactly. So there you go, people. I hope that you all had a really good Friday and that nothing bad happened to anyone. But in saying that, this is a really good topic into women and how they think and how they have all these little superstitions and all these like little idiosyncrasies that they have, you know, in their circle of friends or even just on themselves. Because today we are talking about the girl code. Da, da, da. <laughs> And today to sit in the men's corner to defend the men if this is, if, you know, he thinks this as he is the voice of reason for the men on the Girls of 28A, we have uh, the lovely photographer who has been on many times, Sean Armenta. Hello. 
Oh, it's Hi, so Sha. good to be back. It's so good to be back. I've missed you guys. Uh, especially my Aussie, lovely, beautiful friend. Woo, woo. I, I, miss, I just miss hearing <laughs> your voice is what it is. And, you know, we're, we're both... Been, we've both been busy. We have both been busy. And, you know, I've, I've had to resort to just listening to the podcast just to hear your voice, Trish. So you were but, over the moon when I rang you today yes, and said, totally. please be the, the voice of reason for all the men out there when we put together our 30 points as to what the girl code is. Because, do you know what? There's a guy code. There is definitely a guy code out there. But when you say it's the girl code, some people kind of go, Girls are so bitchy and backstabbing anyway. There's no freaking girl code. Girls would do what they want when they want. But if they do this, they will be kicked out of their bricada. I, you know, the, the number one evidence that girl code does exist, and mm -hmm. I believe it does exist, is y'all go to the bathroom <laughs> at the same time in a group. And that's, and until now- As it's, Julia it's, and I nod our heads. <laughs> it's, it's like yes, the greatest mystery of the universe. Like, what do you guys talk about in the bathroom all together? Why do you need to all go together? And what happens in, you know, in the bathroom? So yeah, we like uh, each there's other. a girl code. There's a girl code. In one or few sentences, <laughs> what is the boy code? What's the number one rule for the, bo the bro code? <laughs> Bros before hoes. Ah. Bros before hoes. Um, and you know we don't like backstabbing one another and we're always buddy buddy no matter what through thick and thin that kind of thing and within each group of guy friends you will have your own specialized like unique set of of other guy code so you know it differs from group to group but generally you know we all look out for each other and we're all we all try to be you know there for each other and not try to one up each other gosh Okay. So we're so, simple, we're guys. You're sim we, meanwhile, we have 30 points, people. Yeah. 30, okay? Listen up. Point number one. <laughs> if you change boyfriends so fast they rarely achieve name status, you must, the man must be around for at least six weeks before you make any of your girlfriends remember his name and he should be referred to as that guy or the boy. Agreed. Okay. Agree? Wonderful. Yeah, okay. Agreed. Well, okay. Well, that's for you guys, right? That's for us. Okay. Okay. So, number two, it's okay to have a Mr. Right Now, which is a guy who will kind of act like your boyfriend, kind of be like your boyfriend. You're not necessarily romantically involved. You might kind of have a bit of a mole, mole, snog, pash, whatever country you're in, and then you make out. Um, but all the girls are okay with him, and he is not Mr. Right. And he'll never be Mr. Right, but he's oh, just sad. Mr. Right now. Can, and you don't want him to be Mr. Right away either, right? <laughs> he's just kind of like the fun guy. Okay. Oh, look, we've lost Julia. <laughs> oh. Okay, so moving on to the next, to the third one. Um, if you just met a guy and absolutely know nothing about him, during girl talk, you have to refer to him as... A guy with an example, such as um, the guy who has the really bushy eyebrows, or the guy with the black blazer, or the guy with the BMW. You guys are brutal. That's not brutal. It's, you're not around. It's when we are doing okay. it in girl talk. Okay, got it. So, we, so, Julia, did you hear that one? Yeah, I did. I just popped in for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no name references in the first six weeks. Just still... The guy with the car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, we do the same. And that goes so. under the number one. If you if you're a girl that kind of recycles through men, exactly, because as your friends, we get emotionally attached to these people. So if you if you don't name them yet, but you call them Mr. Big, mm -hmm. right? Sex in the City style, mm -hmm. then yeah, still Im Im we're impartial because it's not personal. And you guys do it as well. Yeah, we we totally do it. The girl we with the big tits. Yeah, the girl yeah, yeah. with the nice teeth. Yeah, the screamer. Well, I'm sorry. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> screamer. <laughs> Oh shit, okay. Um, if you, what's the next one? It is, every girl every must girl. wait at least a day and a half for calling a guy whose number she has just gotten. I don't know, I feel like in, in principle, I don't even believe that a girl should ever call a guy at first, but, but I'm probably guilty of breaking my own rule. It's 2014, folks. It's 2013. Or, sorry, it's going to be 2014. <laughs> it's 2013. And I, I don't, it's funny because women are all about, 
we want to be equal, yada, yada, yada. And then you have a double standard of needing to, you know, not wanting to call the guy first, not wanting to ask a guy out. I oh, mean, come honey. On. You I know get what? it. It's completely a double standard, but it's also a bit of, you know, human psychology. You want to make a, no one wants what's easy. <laughs> Especially men, <laughs> especially men. But I know I've called a guy a couple, you know, like you know, first before. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Whatever. Okay, so we all agree with giving it at least a day and a half, though, Grace. If you are going to be the first caller, give it a day and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a day and a half is quite good. Um, you are never, in any case, to date a friend's ex or a guy who she was really into. Now, that is a big no-no. Like, there is no way in the world I'm gonna go and date your ex, Julia, or any of my other girlfriends. Along with, I don't, I would never hook up with any of my friends' hookups. Yeah, even hookups, I agree. Unless it's a, a, a very drunk makeout. Okay, we then I think, <laughs> so isn't that and then if you're thing? also really drunk and then it happened, it's still not something that you should do or be proud of, but that's, I think, more acceptable. If you regret it too, and then you apologize. You're like, oh my God, I was really drunk and I ended up making out with that guy that you made out with, the other one, you know, the guy with the with the black car, that one. He's the guy who makes out with everyone. Or there is the exception yeah. to the rule. That guy who just makes out with everyone. Everyone yeah. likes him and everyone loves him, but he kind of just makes out with everyone as well. So you talk, you referring to that guy, Julia? Or not even that guy, just if if it, it was a casual thing for your friend and then you fucked up and you did it too. Okay. As long as it's casual on her behalf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Ideally, I guess everybody wants this rule to happen, but every group that I've come across, they've all dated each other's blah, 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 and it... It never, it never. Yeah, okay, wait, though. No. Is there a time frame that you should wait in between? Because let's face it, people, Manila's not that big. Right, especially here. Especially <laughs> right. Here. So is there a time frame that, that... Yes. Do guys have a time frame that they wait? Um, if so, let's put it in our little list. No, I'm kidding. Right. Um, I don't think... Let's see. Yes, I have been guilty. Um, it's, it's like, obviously, if, if the previous couple mm -hmm. have already moved on to other folks, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. we're talking like open season, right? Because then it's mm -hmm. fine. Yes. The minute that somebody else gets a, gets a partner, yes, it is open okay. season. There you go. And well, then and no, I, think I would in say... In code, it's okay. In girl code, it's still a bit weird. Even if you do have a new boyfriend, it's still weird. Uh, yeah. It it, is... It's awkward no matter what, but I think six months to a year I, might be good, yeah? Oh, uh, maybe I don't know. I've never done it. I've never, I've never. Yeah, I think it really is against girl code. It is, but if, I think in a burkada, in a group of friends, totally against girl code. But if there's another girl group and then there's another girl group, but they're kind of semi-friends. Then that's okay. Yeah, but that's then that's different. okay. That's different. Because yeah. you're not, you're not close. close. You're not the core but group. Yeah, I think within the core group, group, no. Within the core group, no. Okay, so there you go. It's a, it's unanimous. Uh, no. It's a no from the girls okay, of 28. What's number days. six? <laughs> the next one is uh, let's see. What number was You're that? You're never to? to diss a friend's boyfriend except to agree lightly or nod when she says he's being an asshole. Just like this. <laughs> because you know what's going to happen is that. She's gonna fall back in love with him, and then the <laughs> rose petals are gonna fall from the sky, and then she's gonna have a happy vagina when she wakes up in the morning, and you won't, but you'll still feel all those tears on your shoulder when you turn to her yep. and said, He is an absolute cocksucker, you should break up with him. When she wakes up mm -hmm. the next morning and says, Oh, we're okay now, you're still gonna be raging mad, and she's still gonna exactly. remember. So. And then she's gonna remember. What you said about him too. Yeah, so nod and smile. Otherwise, you're never going to be invited to dinner ever again with them. And you probably will lose a friend. <laughs> Next one. Um, if you want to date a friend's brother. Okay, this one I've always found quite interesting. If you want to date a friend's brother, it is required that you get permission first from that friend. Julie, have you ever dated a, a brother? 
No, never. I haven't. But if I was attracted to a friend's brother, I would definitely ask her first. Oh, for God, sure. How awkward is that? I don't know if I have ever. That's just weird. What do you mean? You would never yeah. kiss no. your friend's sister? No, 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 no. What if she was an older sister? No. No, it's just weird. It's just weird. Because, like... You would never want to kiss one of my sisters. No. Oh, okay. No. No, because it's, <laughs> it's like... Because, you know, like, we, we, when we're close friends, we form that family-type bond. Mm. So your family thus becomes my family, and that just seems incestuous. Oh, yeah, okay. In our... Yeah, okay. Right? Our Brookada is terribly close, though. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, I mean, okay. that's pretty much where the code applies, right? But does so it happen with all guys? Because I know that girls, I know yeah. girls, girls who have kissed girlfriends, yeah. boy, brothers. Because look, look what happens. Like, it's, let's say something bad happens, you guys break up, don't get along, and then it just causes that awkwardness mm -hmm. with your mm -hmm. close friends, mm -hmm. and it's just like, mm, it just never becomes the same anymore, I think. So yeah, but a lot of people don't think that far. Yeah. In the and they're just the desperate moment. and lonely if they think your brother's and hot. hot and sweaty. And sweaty. <laughs> so they weird, get man. him into me. Um, okay, so boys wouldn't. Well, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't. Know I would. I'm... I would so ask permission. Be like, Julia, your boyfriend. Your boyfriend. Oh. My boyfriend. Julia, fine. your you brother's fine. <laughs> Give me some of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh. But okay, the next so one is interesting. No girl is ever to hang out with the boyfriend of the friend alone without their permission. And if the permission is granted, there still needs to be other friends around. Agree. I would never I hang out with, with a girlfriend's boyfriend by myself unless he was my friend before first. I was friends with the first. girlfriend. So it... it yeah. Yeah. But when a boy, say for example, hypothetically speaking, okay, Julia, say Andy was my friend before I met you. Andy's mm. Julia's boyfriend, everybody. Um, if I was friends with Andy before I met Julia, it's just natural for the girls to become closer eventually after a year or two. Yeah, yeah it's like the, the lines become blurred and you forget that you were mm -hmm. friends with the boy first and you become better friends mm -hmm. with the girl. In this situation, mm -hmm. though, there'll be those circumstances where the boyfriend will be like, Oi, let's go to the movies. Like, I haven't hung out with you by myself for such a long time. Let's go hang. Like, duh, and be like blokes together kind of thing. That's okay. So, Julia, is this the same sort of situation where, like, you and I would go have coffee, catch up without Andy? Is that kind mm -hmm. of the same? But it's okay, right? Yeah. It's okay that you and I would, would hang out just by ourselves without Andy around. But it's the girl code, so it's girl on girl okay. only. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the girls don't hang out with, with other the girls boys. Boyfriends. I think the boy, the guy friends can hang out with the girlfriends. Right, but not the other way. But yeah, not the other way around. That's true. It's a one way street. Like, you know what, we all say that it's an equal society, but you know what? Some Double things standards. are frowned upon. Some okay. things are frowned upon. Yeah. So I do not agree with girlfriends hanging out with their girlfriends, boyfriends. Um even if you uh, were friends beforehand, I think it should be done in a tasteful manner. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it could just possibly get messy. Or else it's yeah. gonna, you're going to give room for suspicion. No 3 a.m. nightcaps. Definitely yeah. no 3 a.m. Yeah. nightcaps. No. Okay, so the next one okay. is... Um, no, no girl, girl may have... More than one love of her life. Yeah. What is it, Julia? Uh, no girl may have more than one love of her life at a time. So, so, but it's okay if you have a boyfriend, then you can have, and he's your love of your life, then that's okay. Um, so I guess some girls really do, they love the act of being in love, right? So I guess some girls, I don't know any of these personally, but apparently they're around where they have multiple loves of their lives. Do you know any girls like that, Trish? Or yeah. Sean? Okay, well, where I'm from, that's called cheating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but... But he was the love of my life at that hour of the right. night. Yeah, I don't 3 know. 3 a.m. That's just cheating. No, okay. okay. My boyfriend, the love of my life number two. So we are, we are one, one gal guy, one guy girl. Yeah. Okay, yeah. here in the 28A. Okay. Uh, no girl should wear the same outfit or perfume as a friend. Um... 
kind of agree with that. Like, I'm not going to go out and buy perfume of my best friend and be like, oh, I really like this. She bought it first, so she has dibs on it, basically. Yeah, or, and I would never knowingly wear the same outfit that I knew my friend was wearing. That's a bit strange. Yeah, oh, granted, Julia, it's happened to you and I many, many yeah, times. Yeah, I don't know. You, it. myself, Mariana, the three of us are all fashion victims to walking out of our door and going, oh, we have the exact same chain of thought of fashion for the day. Um, but that's done unknowingly, and that's kind of seen, I find that kind of cute, to tell you the truth. Um, okay, the next one. No girl shall purchase, oh, this is kind of the same one. No girl shall purchase a distinct item of clothing, etc., etc. Okay, number 12. No girl shall borrow an item of clothing without asking permission first. Well, you know, that's kind of like... Common yeah. sense. <laughs> um, next one is number 13 is an eye for an eye, a foot for a foot. If a friend borrows something and she breaks it or destroys it, she must replace it. That goes along with if a girl borrows a dress or a gown, you dry clean it and you give it back. You don't give it back to them with, you know, last night's fun on it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> last night's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that. Wow. Okay. Do you boys borrow each other's clothes? No. At all? I oh, don't. come on. It happens. Like if if you unexpectedly decided to go out and you needed a collared shirt, it so happens. Okay. I I, I can see it happening. I've never done because I don't know. I, I because why? Because Have you been given something back and it's been spoiled? No, no, no. no. Sean's more like, I don't want to wear that. Yeah. I, what were you doing in that? I guess I'm, I'm, I'm more of a shoe whore than a clothes horse. So I, my clothes are very limited. So I, I guess, I don't know. I, I just never came shoes across are, that. Shoes are strange though. Like I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and she said to me that she wouldn't lend shoes out to another girlfriend. And I was like, what? Weird. What are you talking about? But she was just like, you know, certain shoes you just don't want to share. I was like, okay, I know, Julia, you and I borrow each other's shoes like every day. Um, so, but there it's, it's I within the Ricardo. Really, really I, would, really I wouldn't go expensive. lending my shoes out to like, <laughs> you know, strangers. random girls. Um, for us, as long as we wear socks, then we're fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so on that uh, note, yeah. Uh, we are going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to let you guys know um, how we feel about when a girl exposes a secret and what happens to her in the girl land. So stay with us. We'll be back soon here on The Girls of 28A. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, with the game Chubby Bunny, but... Um, what's, chub what's... Wait. Have you, have you played Chubby Bunny before? No. You put a marshmallow in your mouth, you say Chubby Bunny. And you keep putting it in your mouth and you okay. keep saying chubby bunny. Okay. Whoever can get the most in their mouth wins. But we're not going to say chubby bunny. We're going to say, we're going to have a conversation. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, okay, gonna va. Okay. And you're going to be like, okay, na, okay, na. Okay. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Go. Two at a time. Okay, I'm going to do it at a time. Okay, gonna va. Okay, na, okay, na. <laughs> I just saw it. What's that for the boat? Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, no. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. And welcome back to the Girls of 28A, where we are talking about the girl code and the list that we basically have created and are coming up with. So, Julia. Yeah. Julia, All right, so let's just hop right to it. Um, we are with Sean Armenta as well. He's giving us the guy's perspective on, you know, if he thinks girl code is a bit weird, if they have the equivalent on guy code. But next, number 14. The penalty for exposing a secret to an unauthorized party shall be exile from Girlville. So, I, you know, I think that's true. If, mm. if, if you, if a girlfriend tells you in confidence, you know, that she cheated on her boyfriend or she 
or she uh, takes diet pills and you spill that secret out to other people like no you're being a bad friend you you deserve to you deserve to get in trouble for this we don't think it's a bit harsh is it depending on the secret it though? depends it depends on the secret yeah, on the, on on the, the you know secret i suppose no, no, no yeah yeah it depends it depends number okay, 15 so Number 15, a girl who... Okay, so number 15 is basically the runoff of number 14, where if the girl says, oh, I didn't realize that it was such a big secret, I didn't realize, you know, I'm really sorry, well, then that's not subject to punishment. Again, it's depending on the secret, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and there's, if there's it's varying, a big one. Varying levels yeah. of, of secrecy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So the more embarrassed you are by the secret, the worse the punishment is. Pretty exactly, much. exactly. <laughs> right. So she right. might not even think, you know, this this is where it gets a bit complicated because she might not even think it was a big deal, but to you, that secret was kind of huge. Right, yeah. Right. So, yeah. But That's definitely. anyway, definitely. let's move on, right? Number 16. Yeah, yeah. number um, 16. I don't know if I completely agree with this one, but it states number 16, inside jokes are not to be explained to any outsiders. I think that's more of like a sorority kind of, you know, thing. It's 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 when you're trying to be clicky and you're trying to you're trying mm. to if it's a really funny joke, for example, like I know that there are a couple of jokes in, in our group that gosh, if they're explained to other people, I would be absolutely mortified. Number one, you know, sometimes jokes that shouldn't be explained, they shouldn't be explained because, number one, you're saying something super catty and you're going to look like a fucking bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, number two, another private inside joke is, you know, like sexual p private inside jokes. I think that is more so the kind of jokes that should definitely not be explained to, to outsiders. Joke or not, you know, it's... It, Still going to be quite embarrassing. So again, the, the embarrassment factor is is the yeah. barometer here, right? Definitely, okay. exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Okay, number seventeen. Always leave a man wanting more, but don't leave him guessing too long, since guys do not take hints easily. <laughs> Sean Armenta. What are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Okay, first of all, it's not that we don't take hints well. It's your <laughs> hints that are fucking crazy sometimes. Whoa, and don't make any whoa, Sean, sense. these are some big accusations wow. here. And it's true. Because like what for you guys it's like your 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 language and your hints are, are just sometimes just really off the mark. But to you they make complete sense. And to mm -hmm. other women, they make complete sense. And for us guys, we're just like, what the we don't know what the fuck is going on with you. <laughs> And you know what, issues. okay, this is going to take a bit of time to explain, but I completely disagree with that because, you know, apparently they say that, you know, women don't really approach men, it's the other way around. Like, normally, you tend for the man to come approach you, whether you be at a bar or wherever, right? No, that's not true. It's the women who's choosing because apparently we will give eye contact five times to a man, five times before he gets the hint and he gets it as, okay. oh, I think Boom, Julia Snigowski, thank you very much. Okay, first of all, it really depends on the guy. <laughs> it does, it does. It depends on the guy and usually how old the guy is. I know I, I fuck guys all the fucking time and they do not get the goddamn hint. Then like you really? Need, you're just, look, you're just eye fucking the wrong guys. Yeah. <laughs> Or they're too shy. They're like, oh. well, shyness, you know, that's, you can't help it if guy's shy. You can't, but like, seriously, right. every guy who I like stare at is shy. And they just don't like me. <laughs> they just don't like me. <laughs> See, like, I grew up around women and I hang around with a bunch of women mm -hmm. too. And I hear you guys talk, and sometimes I think you guys are just obl as oblivious as some guys too. No, as, really? as some guys, yeah, like, oh, like sometimes, I, like I just had a con long conversation with this girl, and I just had to tell her, like, just lay it out for her. I'm like, dude, you wake up, like, you know. So it, it goes both ways. It does. It does. Okay, fair. It goes both ways. Let's agree on that. But next, <laughs> so okay. Agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so what's next? If a guy, if a guy that your friend is into asks for your phone number, you need to deny it and walk away. Or you give him your friend's number and say, I think she's more of your type, you should call her. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Well, there's two very rules here. What if I like him as well? But it's either- You should have stood up and said something soon. <laughs> who claimed him first, right? Yep. 
This is what we guys call the uh, the wingman principle. Oh. So mm -hmm. if, if you're the designated wingman for your partner, then you have to take that role mm -hmm. and take a back seat because you're there to support your your your, your homie, your 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 friend, mm -hmm. because it's his night or her night mm -hmm. to shine, his night, her night to find somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just you just kind of have to take it upon yourself to be like, hey, you know, I'm gonna be a good friend to you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to hook you up with this person. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's fair enough. I do know that some of my dear guy friends will walk into a club. Tell me if you have, uh, have done this before. Going. Walk into a club and they will literally be like, okay, and Manila's not that big, right. so it happens really quickly. <laughs> walk into a club and go, okay, so who are you praying on tonight? Mm. And it's like, okay, girl in the red dress, girl in the pink dress, girl in the green dress, mine. Girl in the black dress, girl in the white dress, girl in the fluoro polka dot pink dress, yours. <laughs> yeah, and I think that also goes with, you know, who you ha like who your friends Wait, are. Wait, you're saying this happens? Well, yeah. <laughs> of course it does. And the thing is, we don't really like, we don't necessarily call it out, but sometimes like we'll walk into a club, right? <laughs> Have a couple of drinks and have a look around, and then be like, "Hey, Jim, like, dude, what do you think of that girl over there? Like, I dig her." Yeah. And usually, it'll be a case of your taste is not the same as your friend's taste. Mm -hmm. So, which it, it all works out in the end. You're not really necessarily going after the same girl mm -hmm. per se. But, but but sometimes it does. It does happen. So this just kind of keeps it, you know, wingman foolproof, safe that you won't right. step on each other's toes. Right. Game plan before you know you go in for battle. I just don't think that girls are as calculated as that. I think they kind of. I think. Well, I know that me personally, I work more on a feeling. Yeah. More than a. I mean, I don't know. Okay, so it's we, Julia. You and I know that we are both into completely different dudes, and you are. You will go into a club, and before would be on more of the aesthetic side of things, and for me, I'm not about that. So I would you know, go home alone <laughs> because it's more about personality and, and whatever. So I don't know. I just think it's, we're not as calculated in that sense. I wouldn't However, say calculated. I think you I think can tell. Just... If you've got enough girlfriends, you're going to know if a girl is into a guy or not. Right. Like mm -hmm. You can tell when your friend's attracted to someone and she's laying it on thick. And if you're a good friend, if you're a good girlfriend, you will step down even if you are attracted to him too. Right. But... I guess it really depends who needs it more, right? Because uh, exactly. girls do get catty. <laughs> Let's not lie here. There, are, girls Whose do fight. Whose drought has been the longest? longest. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next one. Julia is six before dicks. <laughs> Simple, right? Why is this not at the top of the not list? Not number one. Right. Because so is... uh, we're women. A lot of girls don't live like live by this rule. A lot mm. of women don't. Don't live by chicks before dicks, unfortunately. I think more girls should live on that code. So I agree. That, yeah. So that's like the right. basis of guy code. Is especially if you're, home, especially, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like your first, like, that's why I asked you at the beginning of the podcast, what is the main, the number one what's thing. the number one thing? And you said, you know, bros before hoes. I think that girls out there should really be more, you know, it's, it's chicks before dicks, especially if you're in a in a group who, um, <laughs> as Sean giggles away, I think that's definitely um, a good code when girls are in a high high turnover of of dating because it's just like oh gosh you know if you're constantly you know have a girlfriend who's constantly dating that guy um, mm -hmm. and you're constantly being shafted because she's going out on her first date yet again for like how many weeks in a row, it kind of gets frustrating after a while. Exactly, and when you're heartbroken eating that tub of haagen ice cream, if you were me, if you didn't treat your girlfriends right, then you really will be alone with that haagen instead of having your girlfriend with you sharing yeah. it. But in all honesty, uh, this, this rule gets broken more often than you think. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, so definitely. The bros for hoes. Yeah. It depends on how hot that hoe is <laughs> and how badly you needed a hoe. <laughs> You'd be like, you know what, you um, hey, uh, exactly. I got to take off real quick. That's where true friendship kind of comes in and where yeah. it comes into how many times is this guy or this girl ditch us for a bit of pussy or for a bit of, you know, cock in the mouth. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's zip through to the next yeah. one. Um, number 20, um, in case... 
Uh, in a case where a friend spreads a horrible rumor about a friend and then apologizes, they are to give they are to be given the cold shoulder by three days. Like, boom. I'm sorry. That's stupid. That's really kind of childish and and. Three days. <laughs> yeah, like three days. Don't you know? Whatever. So I just think that just be adult and sensible about things. Number twenty one. Yeah. In a fight between a friend and her boyfriend, you must always choose your friend's side. We already kind of talked about yeah, this earlier. Spoke about that. Reading. Twenty-two. When dating, a girl should find equal and or enough time to still hang out with her girlfriends. Yeah, that's you know. Yes. That, it's the same. But, Chicks before dicks. Yeah, but is this like just dating or like a relationship type thing? Because you, you know how it is when you get into a new relationship, mm -hmm. everything's honeymoon stage, mm -hmm. and you know that that friend is going to disappear for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really hate I'm you. She just disappeared. Um, I, could, I can do it. But we, you know, it always happens. No, you should find some time. Find time for your girlfriends, girls, because you know, at the end of the day, if he dumps you on the ass right. and you've got to go to those steps that we said in a few podcasts ago of how to win back your ex, <laughs> you are going to need your girlfriend there by your side cheering oh. you on. Yeah. All right. So, Next. Um, when a friend is friend, drunk. Hmm? When a friend is drunk. Never allow her to dial or drive or leave with a random guy. Safety first, then yeah. teamwork. Yeah. Safety first, then teamwork. Then teamwork. Safety oh, I first, like that. All the time. I like yeah. that. That's good. Julia, you want to read the next one? Okay. We, uh, I think we. Yeah. 25. When a friend calls you up complaining about how she is drunk and can't go home, you must allow her to stay at your house without. No, let's not even discuss parents. Yep. So. You need to let your friend stay at your house when she's drunk. That's easy. 26. When out with the ladies, if girl number one points out a guy she's interested in, girl number two should avoid making a beeline over to him to get his number for herself. Show some respect. We kind of did already kind talk about that yeah. earlier. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 27. 27. When, when said... said evening, oh. What is it? 27. Yep. When said evening is described as a girl's night out, that means it really is just for girls only. So consider it payback for all those tree houses and snow forts we couldn't enter as children. So <laughs> no boyfriends allowed. Yeah, agreed. Number 28, stop being the me too girl. If a girl's telling a story and she's gushing about her new love or her new date, don't be like, oh yeah, you know, me too. And oh, you know, there's this guy, la la la. Let girls have, you know, equal time to shine like a bright star, basically. Well, that's for everyone. That's your girlfriend. Yeah. Girlfriend's... Mm. I think so. Uh, mm. Number 28. Uh, sorry, 29. Fine. Be a responsible friend and not a yes girl. I really agree with this one. If a friend is asking if she should wear... Um, oh, do these pants look really good on me? If she looks like a fat pig, tell her to take them off in a really nice way. Just be like, oh, honey. When are you trying to dress? <laughs> um, or if her ex who cheated on her, um, what's, what is this? Or if her ex who cheated on her wants to hang out with you, tell her, you know, just kind of be honest. I think is basically the, the consensus of number 29 yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. Don't let her make stupid decisions. Yeah. And lastly, don't be a hater. If a girl walks in looking gorgeous, you know, the first tendency of girls is to shut her down, say, oh, well, you know, uh, her hair's not healthy. It's uh, fried looking or whatever, you know, to, to bag on her, but whatever. Maybe this girl who everyone's secretly jealous of had a really shitty day. She just got dumb. She got fired. You never know her real story. So be nice, girls. Yeah. I, and girl. you know what? And also, if a girl walks in and she's banging hot, like, appreciate turn around and be, and be like, you know what, she looks awesome. You know, get, applaud the fellow girl if they, if they look great. As Julia said, don't beat them down just because, you know, they look amazing or beat them down just because they look freaking terrible. And then number 31, don't go against the girl codes. Some of them you can go against, but generally speaking, I think like 99% of them kind of yeah. stick to them. I think that's kind of what keeps you keeps your girlfriends around like forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever if you follow girl code. I've got the same girlfriends from when I was like eight years old, you know, and then my girlfriends who I've made here. So I just think it kind of comes down to being honest, not being a catty whore, um, not being selfish, being a good listener. 
So just don't don't be a caddy whore. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys think of any other rules or if you strongly disagree with any of these rules, please email us at the girls of 28A or tweet us at the girls of 28A. Sean, do you have any closing remarks or anything that you want to say for the men out there? Um, I don't, you guys have so many codes. We <laughs> and you have like codes within <laughs> codes within codes. We do, don't we? I don't we? know how you guys get along. <laughs> But uh, women, yeah, we're complicated. You know, simplify it. Honestly, like, I, I just wish y'all wouldn't pay, play so many games. You know, just, I, maybe you get to the certain point where you stop playing games and you just. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There you go. Okay, so that's Sean Amente. Where can we find you if we want to follow you or tweet you or. Yeah, uh, on Twitter, you can uh, tweet me at Armenta underscore photo. On Instagram, you can follow what I do from the day to day uh, at Sean Armenta and find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm on there as well. Cool. Okay, so guys, we are going to be seeing a little bit more of Sean Armenta here on the Girls of 28A because sometimes, yeah, you know, it gets a little bit estrogen driven and so much girly shit going on here. We need a guy to kind of step up and be like, you girls are wrong. So, That's yes, you'll be place. seeing him a little bit more in the next coming weeks and etc. So, I am Trisha Centenera. This is Julia Snigowski, waving in her little box. We are the yeah. girls of 28A and we will see you next week. We hope that we helped today. Bye. <laughs>